Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. Today, a 2v2. Uh, they're pretty rare, I don't do them that often, unless I'm operating with friends, but last night I wasn't, and I was doing a, uh, well, well, the random. This is uh, Katoom, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. Might be a Russian username, I don't know. Anyway, I am operating on the left-hand flank of Mudfight, and I'm operating with an Entente General deck. I have a Vihor over there, I have a bunch of transports, we're gonna try and take that town. The heroes are going to scout ahead, while, in the meanwhile, my ally takes the right flank. He's operating as, I believe, a USSR general deck, and he is going to be very important over here on this left flank a little later. Now, there's usually quite a race here for the town, because it controls the entry points to some extent for Anna, as well as, of course, zoning out Dimitri for a command position for the enemy team. You can see that the Israeli mechanized deck, which was one of the decks that I was facing, is already here, and they're going to be approaching pretty quick. I believe that the other guy was using uh, Dutch-German coalition, but I'm not 100% on that. Anyway, I'm definitely facing the Israeli player. A uh, bit of a mistake there, keeping the OT-TAP-71 stationary. That was not supposed to be stationary, because that's the Parabranchi. Short range, boom bar, heavy anti-tank weapon. And meanwhile, the V-Hors go in the wrong way. So, a couple of mistakes here. In order to deal with helicopters, which this time around didn't materialize, I have two Prochkas sitting in the back. M80As just beyond the smokescreen to try and suppress as much infantry as is coming out of those transports. You can see a whole lot of Panzer Grenadiers there. There is a Leopard 2A5, which is going to be engaged by the Vihor, takes a load of damage, and then two missiles from the right flank from the BMP3s take it out. So that's their Super Heavy out of commission. Allowing a bit more freedom for the Vihor. Now, Special Nikyat Notki taking the front line. Uh, I know they're going to take a lot of damage, but they're also going to provide me with crucial information to see what is going on. And meanwhile, I'm trying to kill as many support vehicles as possible. Two Magach 7 Gemels shouldn't be that much of a concern, but they are inside of a smokescreen. And they're, well, they're slightly uncomfortably close. And meanwhile, the BMPs from the right flank are still doing a lot of damage. They're doing great work. And they are instrumental in us capturing this town. I rarely paid attention to what was going on on the right flank, because I was being kept pretty busy here. And uh, I believe that the town, at least for now, is safe. So, let's reinforce with an additional tank. This time it's going to be the recon tank, the M84AN. I found those to be very, very useful over on the left flank. Because with those tanks, you can spot, you can shoot, and you can duck back into cover. Ideally, before the enemy gets um, either a return shot at all, or gets a whole bunch of return damage in. Oh, sorry, it's not the, the German, it's a uh, Landjut. That's what we're facing. There's the automatic, and the Rapanzer Grenadiers. It is a Landjut deck. So you can see quite a few more of those automatics show up, as well as a whole bunch of German tanks. There's the automatic. I really wanted that dead. Automatic down. I dash back into my smokescreen. And not a moment too soon, because there is a Maglan sitting over there on the position of the 325. That just took a big chunk out of the Vihor, but it did survive. Sadly, it's going to be out of commission for a while. And what I do not have yet is longer range ATGMs. I get the short range from the Pado Branch, but it's not enough. And meanwhile, trying to um, reinforce the left flank, I do not want them sneaking into the sector here through the woods. Cheap M47 Patton, an extremely outdated tank, but at 15 points, it is a very nice fire supporter. Especially if you can keep the enemy out of range, of course. But especially against the Zelda here, uh, they're going to be pretty useful. And while they don't have the best off-road speed, they do, they do hold their own pretty nicely. You're just going to be a little patient with them getting into position. Uh, a couple of ATGMs coming in, both missing. That was the Martyr 1A3s, which were doing the damage. You can see that the Magach 7 Gemels have retreated, at least for the time being. Spreading out a little bit, and there goes the missile. This time around the Martyr does hit the um, uh, the pattern over there, so I'm currently out of tanks. And there are definitely more units coming for the town. It was a bit of a concern, that town. I don't think that at the moment I'm going to be capable of holding it. And in the meanwhile, I'm being pushed here by AM Mirkova 2A. Not a lot of firepower there, in the form of, they only carry, what was it, nine main gun rounds, I think? But that grenade launcher is proving absolutely lethal to infantry. 
especially against the Mehani Chovana. They are going to be dead way before they can do anything useful. So I'm going to have to be a little patient, especially with my reservist infantry, and wait for more reinforcements, especially the more deadly reinforcements. The Israeli player, however, is pushing forward. And the only thing that I have to sort of stop that is the M84AN. Now I'm smoking the position between the town and the tree line over on the left to try and not catch any stray HGMs. You can see me sort of figuring out where I want to smoke. Uh, the no stray HGM is probably more deadly, especially since I'm trying to keep the front armor towards the tank, the Merkava 2, and I would thereby expose the flank of the tank to enemy fire. Finally, my HGMs have arrived, uh, as bad as they are in the Entente deck. You really don't get a lot of good options. So I'm just going to have to try and keep these things at bay, these enemy vehicles, with the Vihor, which is currently being fixed up. As much as we can expect it, the Zaloshnichi, as well as their transports, are dying very quickly. But they're mostly there to provide me information for the MA4AN, so that I know what to shoot at. And just as I'm trying to figure out the situation on the left, in the front of the town there are more Panzer Grenadiers coming in with their martyrs. And I really don't have a lot of fire support to help them out. I do have the HGM team, um, I do have the town itself. But I'm not really able to provide fire support from slash on the infantry that are currently pushing it. There's the martyr, there's the Rov 90 as well as the Panzer Grenadiers, and here, more Rov Thankfully, the M84 AN is doing fantastic work. You're going to see a pretty nice kill list from that unit at the end of the game. Now, the town has been properly bombed, which means that the only unit that survived is the ATGM. So they are very likely to start capturing it, and I placed on a help marker asking my ally for reinforcements. There's just too much coming in, and it seems to be the two players combined, because it's both the Martyrs and the Zeldas, so it's both of the guys who are pushing on that town. And while I have um, a decent control over here on the left with the units that are providing fire support on units and Anna, it's not enough. It's just too much coming in. So, asking for help. And meanwhile, trying to get more units in while uh, in as quickly as possible, but it's difficult. Now, the Vihor tries to dash forward to take a shot at the Magar 7. Uh, doesn't actually take it because the tank was reversing, so instead it fires at the infantry. And I was really only dashing out there to take a shot at the tank. But the Maglan infantry is still there, so I am very concerned about that. My ally is helping out. There's VDV, there's BMPT, and the M84AN still working over as many transports as possible. At this point, I'm not even working on the infantry anymore. It's just the transports. I'm going to kill their fire support so that my infantry, which is going to arrive eventually, is going to have an easier time taking shots at whatever is inside there. Or rather, getting to the town first. You can see that they're losing a good amount of transports. The only units that they have left are the Martyr 1A3s and that tank or two somewhere back in the, the smokescreen, most likely. Now, cold and reservists here, um, in case you're wondering why. The motivation here was that I was going to walk these guys over to the town and use the fire support, so the Patton, the M84AN, and the Vihor to rain death on all the Rovait and Panzer Grenadiers in there. But I don't really get the opportunity to do so. Because my ally has arrived with two Spatsnaz Gru teams, and you can see him splitting them up just now. He's trying to get into that town. The BTR-90s with autocannons and grenade launchers doing as much damage as possible. And so is my uh, M80, uh, sorry, my M80A. Dropping off more infantry. It's a bit close here, but it did work out. Hera on the right providing fire support with rockets. And they might have the town. But it's not going to last, because they don't have the fire support or the anti-tank vehicles, or sorry, anti-tank units that I have. They cannot do anything against my infantry. Or sorry, against my m a my m 4 an the Vihor, they're just struggling. So they call in another bombing run. Fortunately, the Spatsnaz Gru have survived, and they're working on removing the last of the Panzer Grenadiers. And just uh, to highlight how much that m 4 an has been doing work... It almost ran out of ammo. That tank has, what was it, four shells left? So it is almost depleted. And we're not done yet. I'm going to need more ammo very quickly. Because I only have three shots left and there are still more transports and more overheat. The BTR-90 is dashing back after having done, uh, done another foray into enemy territory. 
and wiping out a few more transports. Leopard 2A4 coming in. It's pretty bad news. It's my M84AN is not really going to kill that. The VHOR might, but it is concealed. So I'm going to have to put up my own smoke screen if I want to try and catch that Leopard 2A4 as it's reversing. And sadly, that Magalan team, you can see them just firing a missile now, killing off a BMP3, is still there. We really need those dead. And I need more fire support in the form of mortars, so time to call in the second one. Smoke screen coming up. Vihor moving forward. There's another automatic there. There's Rova Eat, which are being kept at bay for now by special uh, forces there, the uh, Spatsnaz Gru. And my Zolosnichi have finally arrived. But I think the Spats Gru is going to laugh at them <laughs> by the time that they get there. Or rather, if. Then again, they're mostly there just to keep the infantry uh, engaged with something else than my units. Something else than my tanks. The smoke screen from the enemy is doing quite nice. Um, in the sense that my VHOR suddenly cannot provide fire support anymore. And I'm dashing too far ahead with the VHOR. I take another missile. Once again, it's that Maglan team. They really need to get killed off. But it turns out that it's not the Maglan that kills it. It's an anti-tank plane. A Barak flies in. Managed to take one of the missiles from the Prachka, but it survives. So, I am out of Super Heavy, at least for now. I can buy another one, but I don't really have the points to do that. Sadly. I'm going to have to save up for a while. In the meanwhile, we're just more or less keeping this flank under control. We don't have a CV in there, at least not yet, but that's fine. As long as we start to control the sector, that is more important. Even more Zeldas coming in. Mordova each spotted in the woods, which are constantly getting shot at by fire support vehicles. The T-80s that my ally has brought forward and my ATGMs are just about to arrive to hopefully... <laughs> well, I was going to say support the Zeloshnichi, but <laughs> maybe it's the other way around. Um, because they're really, really shitty infantry units. The only reason I have them is to, well, to get into contact with an enemy unit. And then start to provide fire support with other units. They're really just a baiting unit. m 4 an has been fixed up and has been resupplied. Constantly doing work against fire support vehicles. Martyr 1A3 is taking fire. Uh, I dropped off the both the HGM teams a little late. The Leopard immediately takes one out, and the other one, I think, is going to get taken out pretty quick. The Leopard, however, is falling back after taking a flanking missile shot from one of my M80s. So for now, at least the Leopard is being kept at bay, but it's still very much a threat. I have a Super Gleb on standby, but I'm not going to fly that in so long as there is an automatic right next to it. It's not really going to make for... Uh, a safe return trip. BTR-90, funnily enough, working over a tank. And I think they're actually going to get it. Yep, the BTR-90 got side shots on the Merkava 2 there. And was successful in taking it out. Now what, what I have left of the infantry, I'm trying to push forward to keep that zone of Anna controlled. It's not going to work out that well, because I don't have that many infantry units left. It's really just a few survivors from my initial maneuver there. Super Gleb coming in. I'm hoping that I can snipe off the Leopard 2A4. Not take fire from the automatic, as I hope to be out of here by the time that the automatic gets turned on. I lose line of sight on the Leopard, um, and instead go after the Dracon. And sadly... Um, I don't even get the Dracon, because both, both missiles decided to make a sudden jump when they approached the target, and missed. Dropped off another HGM team here. In case they're going to push on that town again, I'll get flank shots with the drug team. Hopefully that will keep the enemy a little bit more suppressed. Or at least motivate them not to come too close. m 4 an working with the infantry to try and move forward. There's still that one heroic BTR-90 that took down a tank. And my ally is going to try and uh, get more forces in there in the form of a T-80. I notify him that I'm sending a CV and he's going to go, Nope, no, 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 I already have a CV on the way. Uh, which is fine. He says, I got it. And then I look back and, yep, there's the CV. So mine is going to go towards the middle. Because that is a sector that we have, well, a decent amount of control over, I'd say. And Dimitri is worth a few points. 
Now, taking out a Merkava 1 here, or at least that was the plan. Sadly, I couldn't get the automatic because it was more or less boxed in by a bunch of buildings. And I was already pretty far overextended with the M84 AN there. I don't mind taking some risks with those tanks because they do have a nice stealth value, but they are pretty expensive at 110 points. Better to keep them alive than to waste them to potentially get a shot at some either infantry units or an automatic in this case. There's another HGM unit, dropping them off and just maneuvering the position. And there's the Maglan again. <laughs> right at it. Panzergrenadiers against the M84AN. Immediately pulling back out. I need to keep this thing safe. Smoking it up. Getting more infantry here. Zaloshnichi just to once again engage the infantry. And then I can push the tank back in. Coloss is empty as my ally notifies me. I can resupply that. There comes the Kurnus and it splashes the infantry that I had there. But the M84AN still survives. I really need to get that thing back as quickly as possible. It's too valuable. So the proletariat are going to, well, sacrifice themselves in order to keep the tank alive. Mihanichovina also being brought in because of their fire support asset. Command infantry in position. And with that, we have a plus two. Very nice. Both the CVs and Anna and Dimitri have arrived. We now need to make sure that these sectors stay ours. Automatic taking some fire, but, well... It's a couple of mortars. They're not really going to do too much intimidation on the automatic. But I was trying to get it with the HGM team there. Sadly, again, it was too deeply entrenched. Couldn't get it. You can see that there is a building just blocking line of sight there. Patton checking line of sight. Uh, I did catch myself... All, well, every now and then, pressing C, which is the line of sight tool in Warno. Uh, it doesn't work in Red Dragon. So I had to press T and use the target, as you just saw me do there, to figure out whether a unit is in range or not. Now then, what do we have? We have fairly safe control of Dimitri. We're once again trying to kill off the Magalan team. I'm considering going for a couple of Prachkas here, but uh, considering the range of the Prachkas, I reconsider and get a Sava, oh, sorry, a Neva, because they seem to start to rely more and more on anti-air, oh, sorry, on uh, not on anti-air, that's my unit, on air power, and I really don't want them to, because those Israeli planes are extremely dangerous. I mean, if we're fixed up, Proletary trying to get reinforced, but in the meanwhile, the Panzer Grenadiers come forward, there's another Zelda coming in, and there's probably more coming out of that Zelda. So, we're going to try and get these guys back. I still need to fix them up. Get the M84AN once again back, because I'm not leading with that in a forest. That's absolutely not a good idea. Let's see if there is a missile, uh, missile return on the OTAT. Yep, there it is. And bombs coming in. Infantry dies. The Coloss takes a bit of a shaking hit there. But once again, the M84AN survives. Moving a pattern into a slightly better position. There's one of the reservists that survived. We really need to get that Maglan team killed. Not only is it spotting everything, but it's also side-shotting most of the infantry. Most of the transports, that is. Now, this is when I should have moved that M84 AN back. But I got a little hungry there. Um, and the Merkava 2A should be defeated. If I have range. Which I currently... Well, we both have range. Um, it's not going to be a good matchup. And there you go. They finally kill the M84AN. Sadly, because that was a pretty heroic unit. That guy did a lot of work for me. Now, we're still at plus two. But it is going to be increasingly possible for them to get a CV into Anna. Because their side, where the Leopard 2 is now, is... Well, it's a bit predictable, but it's fairly safe to put a CV there. They're also moving with a Saifan and a Tsefa to try and hunt down our command vehicle. I'm relocating the Prachka over there, but so far there hadn't been really any air encounters with helicopters, so I didn't have any anti-air there. I should have had something like a, a Spatfoca over there to try and keep these guys suppressed, but not in time. The Saifan potentially spots the CV, because they're very close to it. There you go, they've spotted it. I take it out, but too late. The other bird also dies, the Tsefa B dies, but the CV has been detected. 
And he is instantly responding, my ally, and relocating it. Because he is not interested in getting hit with any kind of artillery or airstrike. Now time to get two more tanks in. M84 A's. Nice amount of fire support. Decent amount of armor. Hopefully that should be enough. He says in chat there, the uh, enemy, I didn't see anything. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I kind of doubt that. Uh, we are probably going to get hit on that CV. There's a Merkava 1 as well as a Leopard 2. You can see that they're not using super high-end tanks. The ranges are so short that you don't need to use a super heavy there. A Moderna in this case would have been fantastic from my side, but sadly I don't have that. So here comes the Super Gleb. I'm just trying to snipe some of their tanks to get rid of their fire support, even if it is only a Leopard 2. There you go, Leopard 2 dead. There's infantry recon coming in. And there's another two Martyr 1A3s coming towards the town. So it seems that the battle for the town is not over. Proletary moving forward, machine guns turned off to make sure that they prioritize vehicles by using their anti-tank weapon. Here comes a Fennec 20mm. That needs to get taken out. The mortars are helping out against the most likely position of the infantry. And here comes a bombing run. Oh, sorry, not a, not a bombing run. The Barak is not a bomber. The Kurnus is. And the Kurnus bombs the position where the CV had retreated to. We lose control and they immediately gain control as their CV has just arrived. So there goes our plus two. Uh, we are a decent amount of points ahead. But for now, we're slightly getting pushed back here. We don't have the numbers. Even my mortars are potentially going to be under threat here. Trying to keep the BVP M80 Ace to deal with the infantry as quickly as possible. And I was considering uh, getting a Thermomig. Because that would have wiped out a lot of the infantry and potentially some of the vehicles as well. BTRTs and Proletari are going to have to at least fend for themselves for now until my tanks arrive. And potentially more of my allies' units, because he also has two T-72Bs arriving, as you can see on the bottom end of the screen. Now, the Proletari, um, they're great infantry units, but they are a little outnumbered. And they very, very quickly died. I still cannot hit that Fennec, so instead it's time for the Super Galeb to take it out, because I don't want an autocannon just hovering around there. Missile gets it. And I evac. Or actually, no, I don't evac the bird yet. I try to get the Merc of a 2A. Coming around. Perfect shot in this the, the back of the vehicle, and the Merc of a 2A dies. The fact that I'm able to fly around with aircraft this much surprised me, because I thought there would be an automatic or some sort of NTR there now. But for now, it is still safe, or the automatic hasn't been turned on yet. It could be just switched off to prevent any seed runs. There's still a Merkava 1. There are more infantry coming in, of course. It's more Panzer Grenadiers. The mortars are once again going to have to stun them, hoping that the other units can assist. But we're mostly going to just need more infantry here. Spreading out the transports here, <clears throat> making sure that I don't get hit in one big bombing run. They keep dashing forward. And um, I would agree with that move, because you want to try and get as much control over this sector as possible. Otherwise, my team is just going to get another CV in there. The Kurnus gets attacked by the Prochka, but both miss, I think, four times in a row. So that was great. There comes another Kurnus. I'm trying to save up for a jet, but I currently don't have the points. The Kurnus drops, and it drops on top of the T-72Bs, instantly killing one. So far, they are very much uh, capable of hunting down our tanks without us doing much in return. The Neva that I was initially buying is something that I never ended up getting. So the unit, sadly, was not there. Actually, no, it was there. Sorry, it was there, but it got killed off just now. It just died. Magach 7 trying to keep... Or sorry, my drug team kind of trying to keep a Magach 7 at range. I really don't have any infantry here. That's pretty bad. M84 AN. Sorry, not the M84 AN. The M84s A. Um, still trying to deal damage against the infantry as it's approaching the town. It's really the only thing that they could do at this time. So I decided to just let them chew through the Rov 8. Had the enemy deployed a smokescreen, this would have definitely not been possible. 
And here comes yet again a Kurnus. This time around, it's not going for the T-72Bs, it's going for my m 4 ans And one of them dies, the other one takes a bad hit, but survives. There's more BVP m as arriving. Not a moment too soon, because we're almost pushed out of this sector. And at this rate, we're not really going to be able to get enough forces in there quickly to stop the combined assault. There is just too much infantry in there. Too many humans, too many different uh, force compositions. Like, it's not even going to be one or two tanks and you're done. You're going to need everything. And then, meanwhile, they snuck something behind our lines. My allies spotted it a few times, but I never quite saw it. So, I think it's time for an, MA, uh, sorry, an MI-35 to hunt it down. There we go. More Proletarian 90. Turn off the Milyutka, because I want those vehicles to use their autocannon. Neva in position. I just need to get the uh, the uh, oh, sorry I need to to get the the planes over my units. There's the Fennec again, and there comes the infantry, Panzer Grenadiers, engaged by the M84A from range as well as the M80s up close. What I did not do right here was that I had my units too close together, because the infantry there and their vehicles is just one big bombing run waiting to happen. I realized that, so I tried to start spreading them out, but <clears throat> not in time. I was too eager to get the kills, and there comes the bombing run, <clears throat> killing off all but one proletary operator. So that was great. Um, that was a bit of an expensive mistake there. Yes, it might have pushed back some of the units, but definitely not enough. Now they're starting to move that Leopard 2A4 into position, or at least a Leopard 2A4. I'm not sure if it's the same guy. I'm trying to get a Hera 2 to spot it, and then get the Super Galeb in to kill it. There is an automatic there, and there's also another plane up, so I have to be careful. I really do not want to use my unit. Here comes the missile from the Neva, missing the Shahak. Missing it again. The Skrajad is the only one that actually did anything useful. I miss a third time with the Neva, and the Neva was li uh, lit up long enough <laughs> for the Barak to take it out. But finally, the Prachkas prove useful and take out the Barak. Took way too much effort there. I really didn't like how many shots the Prachkas had to take in order to take down a plane. And I'm down another fairly expensive anti-air unit. I only have one of those left. Now, let's get these guys to move around. I'm trying to hunt down the CV as well as provide rocket pod support with AMA-35 against infantry as they're crossing the open area there. Also, once again, trying to get the Super Galeb in to kill off the um, 20mm helicopter there. It's not really a priority, though. There's the Galeb. I believe that's a tank hiding in there. That one blue dot. Super Galeb comes in. At this point, I'm basically getting baited into getting another kill here. Not really good show for the Super Galeb, because they weren't even using those Fennex very much. And this is when I get completely overconfident, and I think that a, an MI-35 can take down a Fennec. Uh, it can't. The MI-35 does not have the right gun for that. The Hera then also managed to dash into range, and promptly gets attacked by the Fennec and almost dies. There's the Leopard. For some reason, having its back towards the enemy. I think it was orienting its armor towards my Hera. Maybe it's considering that the biggest threat? I don't know. Time to bring in another one. I really like the Hera. They're pretty decent fire support units. With their 30 rocket pods. Oh, sorry, 14 rocket pods. They can do a little bit of damage against infantry. Making them pretty potent NTCV units. As well as providing just mostly... Passive spotting. I mean, I'm not hunting anything down with it. Uh, at least not when I'm seeing Merkavas and Phoenix. So I'm just keeping it hovering over a tree line most of the time. There's yet another aircraft up. I noted that they were starting to rely a bit too much on air power for my taste. So time to start shooting some of those down. And this is the point where I actively start saving up for the... What is it? The L-19? The L-16? The uh, plane, anyway. The fighter. Now there's 10 minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock. I don't have to push. I don't have to move. I just need to make sure that my sector doesn't fall completely. 
And, well, they already have it, so the best we can do is countercap it. And the next best thing we can do after we have countercapped it is to completely wipe out the units in that sector. Making sure that we once again restore our plus one. But we have a, a decent lead. I'm not worried at the moment. Another MI-35 coming in to suppress the infantry units as they're coming across. It's not the most ideal unit for the job, but it was the fastest to arrive. And we only have a scattering of VDV, a Hera 2, and two patents, and that's basically it there on the left. Yes, the T-72B is there as well, but it's not going to be terribly useful. There's the Panzer Grenadiers, they get hit by seven rockets. We're going to hit them with seven rockets more. And that's the Hera out of ammunition. Once again, a Kurnus comes in. But I sadly, on the Prachka, only have one missile left. And I noticed that there is an automatic. So sending in helicopters is going to be a bit more difficult. I'm at a 4 forward to deal with the infantry there, the recon. My ally has a book. The book is proving to be far more accurate, or at least more lucky, than the Neva. And takes out the Shahak. So that's one of their fighters out of commission. Now we just need to keep that doing that because they still have plenty of planes. And look at that. Leopard 2 command unit. That's interesting. Shame if something happened to it. Sadly, I cannot really use the super gleb here. Because I know that there is an automatic. And an automatic is a fantastic way to quickly get rid of it. But, as it turns out, I didn't need to do it because my ally took care of it with a missile. I think it was a side shot onto the Leopard command tank, and it died pretty quickly. So that was another pretty nice kill, wasting a lot of Blue Force points. There's more Zelda. Now this point was a bit uh, uncomfortable, because I am relying with the patents on the spotting that the Spatsnaz Gru are providing. But they're about to get wiped out. Just watch what happens. They leave... And instantly the patterns just don't see anything. <laughs> They're completely blind. These things have, I think, poor optics. So basically only when they get something bumping into the hole, they actually notice that, oh, maybe we should shoot that. Uh, just This is how close these things need to get, and I still haven't identified it. Sure, you can use the unit viewer to see what it is. It's most likely a Zelda, considering the high number of Israeli motorized, uh, sorry, mechanized units, but still. The optics there needed some help. There is a couple of martyrs there, martyr 183s. The martyr 183s can definitely deal damage against the M80s, but not so much against the patents. There's a Rova 8 there. I'm trying to move the patents and the M80 forward to try and deal with that. Tree line getting in the way though. And there is infantry there. So I'm kind of stuck between two infantry and it's not a good place to be. Even if the tanks are only 30, uh, sorry, 15 points, they're 30 uh, per two. But they are very easy to kill for Panzer Grenadiers. And they have no stabilizer. So the, uh, the, the option here to do fire on the move is non existent. I have to either stop or shoot, but the patterns are not likely to live for very long over there. Just very quickly checking the right flank, right flank seems safe. Six minutes left on the clock. Now, I didn't quite notice it at the time. But there is something happening in Dimitri. Which is more towards the middle of the map. The enemy is throwing up a big smoke screen. You can see it there. And they have neutralized it. So there's a CV inside of that smoke screen. Our CV is back into this sector. So once again, neither party is getting a plus one. But it is something that we need to kill. Their CV needs to go. We still need to find the CV here. Trying to find a decent position here for the MI-35. Not really finding anything yet. Transports once again backing up. I decided to basically sacrifice the Patton, which is not a good move. Just trying to find anything to shoot at. What I should have done was just wait for more units to come in. Because it's a fire support unit, it's not a pusher. It doesn't work that way. Or at least I haven't been able to make it work that way. Now my ally is very much aware of the uh, CV in Dimitri and is trying to kill it. 
And meanwhile, the Patton has once again lost line of sight to the the martyr uh, and probably gets killed by a bunch of 08. Like I said, I should have waited. The allies, uh, sorry, the enemy keeps smoking up the CV in Dimitri and we keep trying to kill it off using, I think it is HE MLRS. It's not the cluster type. L19 just on patrol to dissuade any further air attacks. I think we've taken down maybe 50% of their air force, but they probably still have plenty left. Although I did not see what aircraft went down on the right flank. The Siphon using some uh, <laughs> pretty aggressive moves to try and get forward, and it turns out that it's the Skrejet that finally kills it. Another Siphon, they're just sending recon birds to their death, trying to kill, uh, sorry, trying to spot CVs. I take it out, but again, they spotted it, and the CV needs to move. Allies immediately on it, gets the CV out of there. And they go, no, don't move it. <laughs> Yeah, right. Now, RCV on the move in Anna means that temporarily they have a plus one. But their smokescreen around the Achserit, which is the command of Dimitri, is no longer perfect. That is giving me options, because I am entirely willing to sacrifice a Super Galeb if I can kill the Achserit. So I'm just flying it straight in. I don't care if this thing gets shot at or gets killed. We just need to get the Achserit dead. And there you go. You forget your smoke screen, and we get a shot. Back at plus one. I'm oh, sorry, back at neutral, because the CV that we had is still moving. And it has left the sector, because for now it wasn't too safe, and he's going to move it back into the tree line. Yep, there you go, it turns around. I'm keeping seed over this area, but the automatic was not having any of it. And only when the aircraft turns away... Is the automatic going to engage? And it's not just the automatic. I think it might also be the Dracon over there. Kernus coming in. I have a Thermomig coming in. Specialny is doing some sneaky stuff there on the right. Trying to get more optics on whatever is coming in. The Kernus here was more of a bait than anything else. I still try to fly around it. But while I kill the unit there, the automatic then lights up and wipes out the L-19. So that's my fighter down and my thermomig for absolutely no significant amount of points, sadly. Just got too greedy there with the aircraft. Once again, sending in the seed, trying to still find the automatic, hoping it's still active. And meanwhile, moving forward with the Special Niet Notki, trying to find the CV that is undoubtedly somewhere on the edge of the Anna sector there. I'm ready for A dashing forward. I'd lose line of sight of everything, so I pull right back. But if I eat over there, not a priority. If the M84A can take shots at it, great, but it's not a priority. Special Niet still have not been detected, or at least not shot at. I'm turning off the machine gun there, because I think it might be a vehicle CV, and I need that thing out of commission. There's another CV incoming. I have a super gleb, but, well, they're not that likely to push it into Dimitri without our seeing sail. So let's get the Specialny and spot the enemy. Lots of units coming in there. Trying to get another seat. I really need that NTR dead, so that I can start killing off the infantry using the thermal make, and there's the CV. Killed it off, and Anna is ours. That's a plus two. And there's only 70 seconds left. They're definitely not going to win this and kill, until they kill all of our uh, CVs, which is not that likely. Super Gleb flying around, trying to kill the automatic, and I miss. And the automatic doesn't. Cedar Craft comes in. And actually, I think the Super Galab might have gotten it with the second missile. But at the expense of the Super Galab itself, sadly. M84 was once again trying to help. A little late. Couldn't do anything. Infantry was already dead. Especially just keep going until they meet some sort of resistance. But we're basically running down the clock. It's 20 seconds and we have won the battle. 
Now, this was very much thanks to my ally. Uh, I was being double teamed here. There were two players attacking my position. I could not have held out without his help. And he still had a scattering of units on the right flank to keep that secure. So he really did a lot of work, as you're about to see in the post-battle results screen. There we go. Look at that. He killed a lot of stuff while taking only a thousand losses. So he played very, very well. The enemy just kept pushing at us. Um, could have used a bit more smoke maybe to try and get back into the town. But outside of that, I don't think they did too poorly. They played pretty much break even, killing a lot of our stuff. Um, and the Vihor and the m 4 an did their level best to keep them at range, as you can see. Not really killing any high value stuff, but just a lot of different infantry units. Anyway, that's it for the battle. Hope you enjoyed it. The link to the deck is down below in the description. Use it, adjust it as you see fit, and have a good go with it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for more.